Welcome everybody. God bless you. Welcome to New Light Apostolic Center. We are here. We are ready to celebrate Jesus. We are here to lift up his holy name and we are so thankful that you are here with us here today. And of course, just to let you know, we want to offer you full online services here today. So what we have available for you is uh, we have a prayer line that's available for you, uh, which is 1-712-775-7031. And the PIN number is 487-800 pounds. So you can call there for prayer and uh, let them know that you are looking for prayer or you're looking for salvation. Amen. So we do welcome you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. As well, you're looking to bury the soul to give, to become a partner of new life. Uh, we are doing some incredible things, some magnificent things. So you can be able to uh, do cash app if you like, uh, which is new life or dollar sign, new life A. And they should have it typed up for you. Or you want to do text to give, you can actually text the word give to 205-301-5767. We'll be ready. So at this moment in time, so you can enjoy an incredible uh, time of worship. Grab your family, grab your friends uh, there. Keep that social distancing. <laughs> but have your family, your loved ones, your your children, your husband and wife gathered around uh, the, the the mobile device or the TV. You got an Apple TV or a smart TV. And let's enjoy a time of worship and honor the Lord. I want to introduce you to my very good friends. They're here with us today to bring you worship from the Lord. Uh, I'm a musician, Jonathan, as well, good friend Desmond Hubbard, as they sing the Lord unto you. Search all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find. Whoa! 
today and definitely they're going to come back at the end of this message uh, so they can bless you again so stay tuned stay with us and I pray this word will also bless you don't forget if you need prayer you can put out a prayer request in the chat or if you're looking to, to hear somebody to pray with you we actually got some elders here from New Life that's on the prayer line and they are waiting for you in case you need a prayer or have somebody to pray with you. We got some powerful intercessors. And that number is uh, 1-712-775-7031. The pen is 487-800 and pound. Well, I want to bring just a message before you here uh, this morning. Pray that it will be able to bless you throughout the week. And as well, as you know, we will have midweek services online as well it's going to be extraordinary it's going to be powerful so i really hope that you are sharing you're hitting that button you sharing it you are tagging people writing their name down uh it, or type their name down in the chat and just let them know hey if you want to tune in because the word is coming from the lord straight into your living room or on your mobile device well i want to share with you a message that god gave up to me that to give up to you here today, and it's called Still Standing in a Crisis, Still Standing in a Crisis, and it, it, it's so many different news that have been going on and uh, that's being shared all over the media, social media, and just by word of conversation, and uh, sometimes we don't realize because of the magnitude of this particular news that's hitting the whole globe, which is COVID-19 or the coronavirus, there's also other different things that are happening uh, all around the world. Some very significant things and some things that even was happening before, but just didn't get the news uh, uh, as, as this right here. But I want to be able to share with you some things that God began to share with me. And, and I noticed some people on social media was catching on to it. But I want to look at 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, the 13th and the 14th verse. That 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, and the 13th and the 14th verse. And it begins off to say, to say this right here. Uh, if I shut up heaven, uh, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. Now, just kind of set up a background here, if you will. Uh, I just want you to realize what is God doing? What is God uh, saying here in this particular passage of scripture? And just to let you know, when you realize uh, that these different things have been happening on, in our age and in our time frame, uh, uh, you will, your mind will be blown, if you will. In Australia, and some of you remember the news uh, from December to February, the end of February, uh, in Australia, they've been having fires that have been running out of control, if you recall. 2.5 million acres have been burned up in Australia. Now, I want you to imagine that three years of a drought has been happening in Australia. Three years. Now, for some of you that are Bible scholars, you know exactly where I'm coming from, but three years of a drought of no rain. And because of the dryness of that land in Australia, of course, they've been having, they, they've been having a fire blazing that it could not control, could not contain uh, in that particular land. But that's, that's no rain for three years. And, but even right now, in the south part of Africa, in the other part of the Middle East, there are swarmed clouds of locusts that are invading not just cities, but it's invading towns, it's invading regions, it's invading areas. You can, you can look up right now, you can Google right now, and you will see clouds. Not just a few here and there, but you will see clouds of locusts just invading territory like an army. 
Now, for this particular news, that everyone around the globe, every seven continents around the globe has been impacted by this news, and which you already are fully aware of and, and probably have worn out your ears, which is COVID-19 or the coronavirus, which in turn, biblically, is called a pestilence. So let's look at it here, Second Chronicles 7 and 13. It said, if I were to shut up the heaven, that it rain no more. Well, we see that, of course, in Australia and other parts of the world, even on the west coast of the United States at one particular season. But we see that. Even the second part, if I command the locusts, amen, to invade certain land, we see that here, and now we see pestilence. Now, you may be asking, Apostle, are you saying, man of God, that God is authorized, or God is, is the author of all of this, I'm not going to say that because you need to understand there's a few things first. Number one, that God is in control, but he's not in charge. Let me say that again. God is in control, but he's not in charge. What do you mean by that? Well, see, God gave charge unto man, amen, in the garden. But we gave up that charge when we took up the fruit, when we took the bait, amen, if you will, in the garden of Eden. Then we gave uh, the enemy the, the, the charge, amen, but he had it for a certain season. And so the Bible say this right here. The Bible called him the God of this world, the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air. Now, please understand, if you believe like I believe that Jesus, our Savior, our Messiah, he died upon the cross and he was raised again on the third day. The Bible say that he received all authority in heaven and in earth. Well, let's understand that clearly so I can answer your question. That he received all authority. That means, my brothers and sisters, that there's no more authority left, amen, in heaven or in the earth or below the earth at all period that does not belong to Jesus Christ. Even the believer's authority, we have authority that's only given by Jesus Christ, dedicated unto us. Jesus has inherited, amen, uh, authority that's given to him as the king. We are given dedicated authority, but let me share some good news with you. The enemy has no authority at all, period. Amen. Now, since we understand he has no authority, the Bible still call him the God of this world or the prince of the, watch it, power of the air. Not the prince of the authority of the air, but the prince of the power of the air. So he still has some power. Amen. And he's still ruling the systems of this world. Well, understanding that, amen, we understand that the Bible say that all the creation is groaning, is groaning, amen, for the manifestations of the Son of God, for the revealing of the sons of God. So in other words, it's basically saying that the all the creation, the earth, and, and everything created therein and thereof is waiting for the manifestation of the authority and the power of the sons of God. But in the meanwhile, the earth, all the creation is groaning like birth pains, amen, having contractions. And, and the results of the creation having contraction is what we are seeing here. Amen. So it go back to what I was just saying a few moments ago. God is in control, but he's not in charge. Amen. Because the God of this world is ruling over the systems of this world. But don't, don't fret. Don't fear. Don't worry. Amen. Why? Because the message I have for you today allows you to realize your inherited power and authority. We're about to take authority over the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you are worried, if you are concerned, amen, what the enemy has or has not been doing, don't you worry about that because God, amen, is about to blow your mind. Amen. So we're going to live here further. Listen to the rest of the passage of the scripture here in 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. Amen. If my people which are called by my name, amen, he's talking to the kings. Hello, kings. Amen. And holler back at me. Amen. Type it out. Amen. And say hello. Amen. But let me say it again. Hello, kings. Hello. Amen. Just to let you know you are kings in the kingdom of God. Amen. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Now, watch it. The key word is pray. Seek my face 
Amen. And turn from the wicked way. And then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. Now notice in this line. And will heal their land. Amen. Will heal their land. Amen. So let me go just a little bit further. The key word that I want to focus upon is pray. Amen. Because we have, uh, uh, believe it or not, have, have not fully grasped the understanding of prayer. And when we understand this weapon called prayer, we can be so much more effective in the earth realm. Amen. So I want to talk about that just a little bit because we're talking about still standing. Someone is they're typing to your chat, I'm still standing. Amen. I'm still standing. In the midst of all what's going on, I'm still standing. Amen. It doesn't matter they, they shut down. Amen. The, the corporate world, it doesn't matter they shut down the banks. It doesn't matter if Wall Street shut down. It doesn't matter what they shut down. The government shut down. It doesn't matter if they shut down your home. Let me tell you, the kingdom of heaven will not ever shut down at all, period. Amen. Because God, watch this, is in control. Amen. And heaven will not shut down. So the powers of God will not ever cease in your life. Someone type again, I'm still standing. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to share this with you just in case. The news of COVID-19 has overwhelmed you. Amen. I'm going to let you know, amen, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. Amen. But there are different levels of prayer, if you will. The first level that people are familiar with, and we're going to bring, if you will, uh, a greater enhancement, is asking or petitioning or making a request. Many people are very familiar with that level of prayer. But oftentimes, we don't get the results of what we are asking for because we don't fully understand uh, the authority that we have in our asking. Many people have taught because we have read the scripture when they say, ask and you shall receive, seek, you shall find open, and it, and it shall, or knock and it shall be open unto you. And a lot of people uh, have misunderstood that passage of scripture and thinking that we have to ask and keep on asking uh, if we don't receive it or have it at that time. But Jesus made it very plain and very clear unto us. The Bible would say, ask. And then Jesus said immediately afterward, believe that you have received. <laughs> My God, that can preach by, by itself. Ask and believe that you have received. In other words, amen. Once you ask and you believe that you received, you don't have to keep asking over and over again. Once you believe that you got it, Amen. That's done. You walk away. You celebrate. You give God the glory. You give God the praise. You give God the thanksgiving. Why? Because you believe that you already received. You believe that you already got it. And you ask him, amen, for a breakthrough. Believe that you already received. You walk in that breakthrough. You asking God for a miracle. You believe that you received and you walk into that miracle. You got to believe that you already got it before you even ask it. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? You don't keep asking and asking and asking. It's like a child going to a father or a mother and asking for a, a gas money and that father gave that child gas money for their vehicle, amen, and that child keep asking. Sooner or later, the father will look at them or the mother will look at them and say, listen, did I not already give you what you asked? Why you said asking as though you have not received? That's what Jesus said. Amen. Ask and believe that you have received. So once you ask in your prayer time, you go ahead and walk in it. Don't worry about asking the Father because the Father already knows what you have need of. You just go ahead and walk in it in the grace and the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Someone say amen on that. Play amen. I want to tap on that. You should be sharing this right now because somebody's been asking and asking and asking and asking. Losing sleep. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to lose sleep again. Once I ask God for something, 7 o'clock at night, I'm not going to stay up at midnight still asking God as though he didn't hear me. God does not wear hearing aids. Amen. He is not deaf. Neither is he slumber. Neither is he sleep. Amen. Once I ask, I lay my head down and go to sleep and have a peaceful, restful night of sleep. Amen. Why? Because God, according to his will, has heard my prayer, my petition. My request, hallelujah, somebody, amen. But the second level of prayer, the second level of prayer, amen, is prosumei, which is in Greek, prosumei, amen, which is in Greek, which means uh, to intercede or make a declaration or a decree. In other words, when we intercede, 
We have to make a declaration and to make a decree. I hope y'all ready for this. In the Hebrew, it's called palel. It's called palel. In other words, this is what it's saying. Amen. When you are interceding, standing in the gap, that you need to make a declaration or a decree. Now, I understand this is different from asking or making a petition or making a request. Because when you make a declaration, this is what the Bible say, pray without ceasing. What do you mean pray without ceasing? In other words, every time you hit a situation, a circumstance, every time you face a storm, every time you get into a crisis, amen, you make a declaration, you make a decree unto your God, unto your Father. That's praying without ceasing. Jesus said this right here. He said, men ought to pray without fainting. What do he mean by that? He means another word, this particular level, where you begin to make declarations, make decrees unto your Father, God, amen, without ceasing. Every time you hear a situation, amen, don't you turn to somebody else, you turn to God. Amen, don't you just say anything according to the situation, don't say anything according to your crisis or what's going on. No, you speak the word of God on that in the name of Jesus. Whatever you are going through, if you are experiencing sickness right now, you turn to God and make a declaration. I'm healed according to the stripes of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You're looking for a breakthrough. Amen. You turn and you look at your breakthrough, put a word on it, put a declaration on it, and look towards your God and say, I serve a God, I serve God who is the son of, who is, who represented through the son of Paran, the Lord of the breakthrough. I have my breakthrough right now. Amen. Amen. You make a declaration. You speak the word over that particular thing and watch God hear your decree. Amen. It's the difference. It's a difference. That's when we can pray without ceasing. Yes. That's when we can pray without fainting. Amen. Because we are hidden from one storm to another storm, from one situation to another situation. Let me tell you something. And the, the thing you can depend upon is the word of God. Amen. The thing that you can trust upon is the word of the Lord. Let me go a little bit further with you. Amen. So when the Bible say uh, for us to ask and, and you shall receive, it's not talking about a, a, a promise you may, amen, making a declaration. Amen. That's completely different. These are two different levels here that we need to understand. Amen. So when we understand it, the second thing that we need to understand about prayer Amen. We believe we have to contend with the enemy, amen, or even consult with them. That, let me bring some more understanding to that. Uh, turn with me, if you will, to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the 12th verse to the 13th verse. The Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the 12th verse to the 13th verse. Is he reading his Bible? But brothers and sisters, amen, we got to get in our Bible in this season. Listen, if they do quarantine, Amen. The whole nation and so forth. No better time for you to get in your Bible. Amen. No better time to grab your prayer shawl, your anointed oil. Amen. Get your uh, quiet, get in your quiet place and begin to pray. Grab your children. Fathers, grab your children. Mothers, grab your children. Amen. Married couples, get together and begin to pray. Begin to bombard heaven with declaration and decrees. But this is what Ephesians, the sixth chapter, say. The 12th and the 13th verse. He said, listen to this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. My God, who are you catching this? But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, when you read this next part out of the, uh, out of the Amplified Version, he said, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. In, in the Amplified Version, it said the day of crisis. Oh my God. It, it don't say the evil day. It said the day of crisis you will be able to withstand. And do, you, do, you, do you see that? Then, then it say, they haven't done all to stand. Now, let me go ahead and, and talk about that just for a moment of your time. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So it's telling us we don't wrestle against people. Are you understanding this? You, we don't wrestle against people. I know people are divided these days. You know, black against white. Amen. They divide against Republicans, against Democrats, and they uh, divide against liberal versus, versus conservatives. 
in different uh, classes and, and generations, amen, the, the X generation versus the millennials or, or the Y versus the, uh, the baby boomer. Listen, if we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, amen. We put in too much energy and focus and time and distraction in that area, amen. Man don't have heaven or hell to put you in. Hallelujah to that. Let me say that again. Man don't have heaven or hell to put you in at all, period. But the enemy is seeking to and fro whom he may devour. Amen. So we got to understand uh, a few things. And so when we understand how the enemy works, the devices of the enemy, let me go back real quickly into this, this, this uh, second chronicle. Stay in Ephesians. But when second chronicles mentioned about uh, the, the, the rain not showing up, the locusts not showing up, and then also uh, uh, the pestilence. I want you to notice what is it impacting. Number one, the rain, watch this, is impacting the land. When the rain is not happening, it's impacting the land. The seed is in the land. The mobility, the activities that's happening on the land. And when there's no rain, the camels, the horses during that particular period, they are not traveling. They can't do certain activities. So when the rain has ceased, the activity in the land began to cease and begin to be still, begin to be halted. It's not much activities happening when the rain has ceased. Are y'all hearing this? The activity has stopped. Amen. It, it, it become immobile because the rain is not available. Notice in this thing, amen, the locusts. The locusts come and take the grain, the harvest, the crops. Amen. The other word is the produce. Amen. It is the economy. Amen. Because Israel was an agricultural uh, nation. In other words, it, it just was a how they ate is how they done business. So the agriculture was their economy. So when a locust came to on the grain and the crops and the harvest and the produce, it also messed with their economy. Now you got to see this. My goodness. Amen. So now the pestilence. The pestilence mess with the health of the people. So what's going on here? You got one particular crisis that mess with the activity of the land where they begin to be a slowing down or a ceasing. The second crisis deal with the produce or the harvest or the economy and the economy is now affected or become unstable. Now we're dealing with the health of the people. Now the people are health. Amen. Has been affected. Now you see three different areas, and all three areas crisis are happening today. Amen. You see activity. Schools are shutting down. Universities are shutting down. Certain corporations are shutting down. People are not traveling through air and train and so forth. People have to keep certain distances apart from one another. So there is a slowing down of activities, and there is a slowing down in the economy. Amen. Never have we seen since 2008, amen, the economy has been impacted on Wall Street and across the globe. Amen. But none of that health is also being affected, not just physical health, but mental health. Amen. But this is because what is happening in the spirit realm. Somebody, somebody tell somebody, amen, if you're at home with somebody, tell them, I'm still standing, though. I'm still, I'm still standing. I'm standing strong. But I want you to notice this. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in the high places. Now, the way Paul writes, Paul writes like this. He, he writes in irony. In other words, this is how Paul writes. What he say is not what he really mean. What he really mean will be revealed later on in his writing. In other words, sometimes Paul would say some things to entertain because that's what we want to do or that's what we desire to do or that's what we have been doing. But Paul basically said, okay, that's not what we really should be doing though. In other words, he kind of played with words as he began, amen, to, uh, to bring out the real meaning. And so he started off saying this right here, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, he made that plain. But then all of a sudden, all, all of a sudden the, 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 the verse continued on and said, but against principality. Powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high place. As though Paul was saying, do not wrestle against flesh and blood, 
but wrestle up against the demonic entities and demonic powers. It seems as though Paul was encouraging to wrestle against all these spiritual, invisible wickedness and rulers of darkness and powers and principality, but they contradict some other letters, epistles that Paul wrote. Because Paul wrote in other places, resist the devil and he should flee. Do you remember that? He said, resist the devil and he should flee. And another passage of scripture, Paul said this right here, that the only fight we should be fighting is the fight for our faith. He said the only fight we should be engaged in is the fight of our faith. But now it seems as though this particular verse is contradicting everything else that Paul wrote. Or is it? Or is it really? And so listen here as we continue on. Listen to what I say here. He said that you may be able, watch this, to withstand. To withstand in the day of crisis or in the evil day. Now wait a minute. Now I do grappling, if you will, because the word wrestle, uh, the, the 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 sport or the 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 art of wrestling is grappling. So I do a little a little grappling, and the thing with grappling is you may start off standing, but you end up on the ground. Cause that's grappling. That's wrestling. He didn't say fighting, he said wrestling. So Paul was being very pacific here. I want you to catch this, saints of God. Amen. He said uh, about wrestling. Wrestling means grappling. It means get on the ground and get as low as you can get. Amen. And so, but here he said, be able to withstand. In other words, stand within your crisis. Now, let me go ahead and, 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 and bring this into you. Can you stand and grapple on the ground at the same time? Now, I want you to catch this. Can you stand and grapple on the ground against your opponent at the same time. No, you cannot. You got to do one or the other. You cannot do both. Amen. Amen. You got to rather stand or you got to get on the ground. Now, this is what Paul basically is saying. If you're going to wrestle against your enemy, you are playing his game. Oh my God. If you want to wrestle with him, if you want to wrestle with the demons, if you want to wrestle with the powers, if you want to wrestle with the principality, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, and high places, if you want to wrestle, you want to grapple with them, then you have just left what you are good at, and you just enter what it is good at. You just enter into its realm. Now, the temptation is, amen, the temptation is to, to, to go again, to contend against the enemy. Now, let me help you out. Amen. Why do you want to contend against the enemy who has already been defeated? You've already got the victory over the enemy. Why do you want to fight with somebody that the enemy, that, that, that God has already defeated? God has already defeated your enemy 2,000 years ago at the cross. But somebody should be shouting right now at home. I can feel somebody howling at home. I can see somebody running around. Amen. That couch. Amen. I see somebody swinging from their chandelier or they sin affair. But let me help you understand. You don't have to fight the enemy. You don't have to fight or wrestle against sickness. You don't have to fight and wrestle against death. You don't have to fight and wrestle against Jezebel or Ahab or against pride or whatever it may be. You don't have to fight and wrestle against all of that. Why? Because they are already defeated. The Bible says when you see these days happening, when you see the day of crisis happening, what you should do is just stand. Yes. My God, how to do it. Just stand right in the midst. Yes. That's what God told Moses. God told Moses, amen, Moses behind him, amen, he had the, he had the, he had the army of Pharaoh in front of him. He had the Red Sea, amen, but God told Moses, stand still. Yes. And see the salvation. Well, I feel like running, y'all. And when I run, you're not going to see me running God. But the Bible, the Bible says that God told Moses to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And so here we see that Paul said to withstand in the evil day or the day of crisis. Then he began to say, and having done all. Oh, I can't be going to go. Can y'all handle this? Ain't no talking about it. The question. He said, having done all. Read out the Amplified. Because this is what the Amplified said. Having done all within the crisis that's expected of you. 
In other words, if you feel it on the Lord, they're telling you to stop up, baby, stop up. It's all, all right. right. It's not, it's not showing that you are a little of faith. And, right. and, 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 and the Bible says, get some hand sanitizer. I got my hand sanitizer right there. Amen. If the, Bible, if, if, if the Lord is leading you, amen, to stay, to stay inside, amen, and you still get paid or whatsoever, amen, you do what the Lord leads to do. But the heaven done out. Are y'all seeing this? Yes. Heaven done all. What did he say to do after that? To stand. stand. And heaven done all according to what you need to do in the crisis. Therefore, still stand. Why? Because God is going to bring you through. Lord. I'm talking to somebody out there right now. Yes. God is faithful, somebody. God is going to bring you through. Don't you worry. Don't you wait no sleep over this. I don't care what CBS is saying. I don't care what NBC, Fox is saying. Be informed, but don't be in fear. Hey, right. You can tap that in there too. Be informed, Amen. but don't be in fear. Right. For God did not give us the spirit of fear. Amen. Are you hearing it? Yes. The only type of fear God gave us is to fear him, which is reverential respect. Amen. Amen. But we should not fear anything upon this earth. Amen. At all period or from out of this earth. Let me go ahead and finish it because I'm being kind of excited. Amen. Amen. So last thing I want to say this right here. Amen. That Paul often amen, mentioned about, about things that are hidden. The hidden thing. Amen. The hidden thing here is about praying. About making a declaration. Amen. He, the, the, the end of this verse that Paul was talking about is praying, saints of God. Pray without ceasing. Amen. Pray and fainting not. So what you mean, man of God? That means you got to speak. Your power is in your words. Amen. Speak life in it. Amen. What other people are saying, amen, this, 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 this corona, this corona, the corona, the coronavirus, amen, I'm about to call it something else, amen, but this coronavirus, amen, is trying to take us all out. They said the devil is alive. All right. It's not going to take me out. Amen. It's not going to take out my household. It's not going to take out my children. It's not going to take out my grandchildren. Come on, somebody. Amen. Why? Why do you say that? Because John 10 and 10 said it's right here. For he came to get life yes. and life more abundantly. Yes. You declare the word upon it. Amen. Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I serve a different God. Amen. I don't serve that enemy anymore. I serve a different God, and he came to get life and life more abundantly. Amen. So I trust in the word of God. I believe in the word of God. Amen. I hang upon the word of God. Man, that's my prayer. Amen. I just don't pray while I go in my prayer closet. Everywhere I go, I'm praying. Amen. Everywhere I go. I go to Walmart, I'm praying. I'm pushing that buggy down aisle 10, I'm praying. <laughs> amen. I'm praying. Amen. When I shake somebody's hand, amen, because the people come to me. They still come to me. And they, they want to hug me. They want to shake my hand. Guess what? I'm shaking hands. I'm hugging. But I'm praying at the same time. Lord, watch this. Lord, heal them in the name of Jesus. They need it. Yes. Yes. Lord, deliver them right now. In the name of, because why? The anointing of God is all over me. The oil of Jesus is all over me. Hallelujah yeah. somebody. Yeah. Amen. So I just want to share this word with you. I'm still standing in a crisis. I'm still standing. I want to encourage you, if this message has touched you in some way, shape, or form, amen, and you desire salvation, my brothers and sisters, maybe somebody out there, they say, listen, in this hour of crisis, I want to know the Lord in a for real way. But this is your hour to know Jesus, have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Our phone lines are open right now. And you can call right now. Somebody's waiting for them on the other line. They will be available from 11 to 12.30. Amen. They are here. And it's one 775 7031 487 800 pounds As well, if you look at me apartment, we have cash app available. That's in, amen, the thread. As well as you can dial the number 205-301-5767. Or we can even have pickup. We got people here at the church outside in the rain waiting. We got some people that love to partner with us. We got some people that are faithful to this house still in the middle of a crisis. So they're going to be here outside the parking lot. You can do a drop off from uh, until 1230. Amen. But right now, my wonderful friend, my wonderful friend, they're going to come before you right now. And they're going to bring you a word. 
Amen. Hang with us. Worship with us. Believe in God that we are still standing in the midst of a crisis. God bless you. Oh! 